even when they're given properly, over 15% of standard mandibular blocks fail, often because of a variation in the normal anatomy. In 1973, Dr. George Gow Gates, a general practitioner of dentistry in Australia, described a new approach to mandibular anesthesia. His technique, which he'd been using in his practice for about 30 years, is a true mandibular nerve block. It is indicated when we are carrying out procedures in either one or multiple mandibular teeth in one quadrant, as well as for procedures on the lingual soft tissue or the buccal soft tissue anterior to the first molar. For surgery on the molars, a separate buccal nerve block may be required. It is particularly indicated if there is a history of failure of the standard mandibular block and evidence of accessory innervation. The nerves anesthetized with the Gau Gates technique include the inferior alveolar, mylohyoid, lingual, and auriculotemporal nerves. The same tissues are anesthetized as with the standard block, except that about 75% of the time the buccal nerve is also anesthetized eliminating the need for a separate buccal injection. The objective of the Gau Gates technique is to deposit local anesthetic immediately anterior to the neck of the condyle. This is in close proximity to the mandibular branch of the trigeminal nerve after its exit from foramen ovale. With the Gau Gates technique, we should be able to anesthetize all of the sensory branches of this nerve, including any accessory nerves. You begin again by palpating the anterior border of the ramus. You do move superiorly to feel the coronary process and the insertion of the tendons of temporalis. This will outline your lateral uh, landmark for insertion of the needle. The needle will be advanced superiorly and laterally, advancing towards the neck of the condyle until you contact bone, withdraw slightly, aspirate, and inject. The patient should open her mouth wide, and you're lining up the plane from the corner of the mouth to the intertragic notch, which is that part of the ear just below the tragus. And this gives the correct angle uh, that the syringe will take when you're going into orally. It is also helpful to look at the angle that the tragus makes with the face, as that also will help with the orientation of the syringe intraorally. Once the angle is determined, you're then able to begin the injection by palpating your intraoral landmarks. And as with all three techniques, you start off by feeling the anterior board of the ramus, my finger is now in the coronoid notch and the external oblique ridge, and I move it upwards superiorly until I feel the coronoid process, and at this point I can feel the insertion of the temporalis muscle. It's important to not insert the needle within muscle, so this acts as a lateral uh, guide for the insertion of the needle point. The needle insertion is uh, higher and more lateral for the Gau Gates block compared to the inferior alveolar nerve block. The height is determined by the maxillary occlusal plane, and very often the needle will lie just below the mesiopalatal cusp of the second molar, so the needle will be coming at the height of the maxillary occlusal plane. And the lateral landmark is determined by the tem tendon of temporalis. Again, you do not want to insert into the temporalis, so you insert the needle just medial to that landmark, and this would represent the correct insertion point for the Gau Gates injection. palpating the internal landmarks, and just open really wide. The syringe is going to approach from the opposite side, going below the mesiopalatal cusp of the second molar, and the needle is advanced 25 millimeters till you hit bone, you back off slightly, aspirate, and then slowly inject. Hold the syringe at the angle determined from the extraoral landmarks, aligned in a plane joining the intertragic notch and the corner of the mouth, approaching from the contralateral corner of the mouth with the needle tip aiming for the neck of the condyle. The barrel of the syringe is usually over the contralateral mandibular canine. Once inserted, the needle should be slowly advanced until bone is contacted, which should occur in approximately 25 millimeters. This point is the neck of the condyle. Once contact is made, the needle should be withdrawn one millimeter and the full cartridge administered following a negative aspiration. It is important to note that if bone is not contacted, one should not inject, but redirect until the neck of the condyle is contacted. The injection site is bounded by the medial pterygoid muscle 
and the sphenomandibular ligament medially, the lateral pterygoid muscle superiorly, the ramus laterally, and the neck of the condyle posteriorly. We should ask the patient to keep their mouth open for about one minute if possible, as it is believed that this keeps the mandibular nerve closer to the site of injection and therefore improves onset of anesthesia.